All right, everybody. I hope everybody got plenty to eat. I see I got plenty of volume on me. I got everybody to look up real quick. Praise the Lord for that. Good to have you at Freedom Baptist Church for our Wild Meat Men's Fellowship. We appreciate each and every one of you being here, and I hope you had a good meal, and I know you did. If you walked over through that room, you had a good meal tonight. And uh, so we praise the Lord for that. Thank you for all the ones that brought the meal and uh, prepared it, and uh, we appreciate that so much. We're going to stand together. I know this is going to be risky after a meal like that, but we're going to stand together, and we're going to sing glory to his name. If you need a hymn on this page 195, but the words are going to be behind me up here too. Let's sing it out together. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name, glory to His name, glory to His name, there to my heart was the blood Glory to His name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where He took me in. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. blood applied glory to his name now before we sing that last verse Ben y'all just got warmed up good now I know let's really sing it out on this last verse now come to this fountain so rich and sweet cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet plunge in today and be made complete glory to Be seated. Thank you again for being here tonight. All right, gentlemen, we're going to move real quick here because we didn't just come here for this. So if you'll bear with us, we have a ton of gifts that were donated for this meeting and we want to get them out to you. So David White's up here. We're going to work together. If you registered, your name went into an Excel spreadsheet and there's a corresponding number next to your name. So we're going to do this number generator thing where it pulls up a number. If it pulls up 17 and the name was John White, I will then call out the name John White and we will deliver this gift to you. So we got some guys up here to help. Dave will look for the first name here and generate it. Uh, so we're going to give several of these things out. If you hear your name called, please stand so they can deliver. The first thing is a camo book bag, igloo cooler, and Daniel's got it right there. And this will go to... Number 21, Braden Herbert. Herbert. So congratulations, Braden. The next item is a case knife. It's donated, uh, that, that was donated by Venable Brothers, so thank you. This is donated by TK Electric, and it's a case knife, and this will go to? Shane Hunley. Shane Hunley, where's Shane at? Is Shane here, right over here to the right, guys? Thank you. Then we have uh, fruit butter. Guys, they're just prizes. We, I mean, they're not, they're, he didn't do anything to win it. We don't need to clap like that, come on. We got a uh, fruit butter. This is uh, some folks in our church have a uh, have a uh, zany colors, uh, zany flavored uh, types of jams and jellies. And so, fruit butter by Zane Flavors goes to William Colvin. William Colvin is William Colvin in the bit right here, back right. Thank you. Then we're gonna go twenty five dollar gift card. Twenty five dollar gift card to Lowe's. This is donated by Hunley and Sons. And this goes to number one oh six. Joe Brown is Joe Brown here. Right here in the middle. Congratulations. Then from uh, Fisher Fischl Builders, we have a case knife. This is item number uh, five we're giving away. And so this winner is 200. Daniel Arnold. Daniel Arnold. Where's Daniel at? Third row here. Good job, Daniel. Way to do nothing. And um, this is uh, donated by JB, uh, JVB Automotive. It's another case knife. Item number six over there, fellas. David Soy. David Soika. David, if you could stand right there. Good job. 
And then uh, from Zany Flavors again, we have Hot Pepper Jams. Hot Pepper Jams is item number seven, and that goes to? Dwayne Beeson. Dwayne Beeson, right here. Great job, Dwayne. And let's see, uh, which one was that? What'd you win there, Dwayne? Seven. Seven, thank you, good. Number eight is a picture of Pilot Mountain. This was taken by a photographer in our church. Her uh, company is called Scarlet Light. So it's a beautiful picture of Pilot Mountain. Item number eight goes to? Ray Sherbino. Ray Sherbineau, my goodness, it wasn't fixed, even though it's my brother-in-law, I promise. And uh, we were just eating and he goes, man, I never win these things anyway. And uh, well, there, there's your early Mother's Day present for uh, Nancy. All right, here we go. From uh, Betty's Country Store, oh man, Ray, I know he was talking about this. Uh, this is funny, he wanted this, sorry Ray. He wanted the uh, Quantum Spinning Rod and Reel by, uh, this is donated by Betty's Country Store, and this is item number nine, it goes to? Kurt Bacon. Kurt Bacon, where's Kurt over here? Congratulations, Kurt. Everyone's like, man, he don't look like a fisherman. Sorry, uh, it's the way it works sometimes. From Fischl Builders, we have another case knife, uh, item number 10. Gary Rush. Gary Rush, where's Gary at? Gary Rush? Well, I hope he enjoyed his meal, because that's the only gift he won today then, I guess, huh? Gary Rush. None? All right, we'll do another number here. This is again for the case knife. Doug Wilson. Doug Wilson. I saw brother Doug. Where's he at? Right over here. Good. Uh, item number 11 from Zany Flavors Fruit Jams. And uh, this is going to? Billy Smith. Billy Smith. Where's Billy Smith? Oh, right back here. Thank you, sir. And we're about halfway done, guys. Let's see. Um, What am I, what, what's next over there, Daniel? What, is, what number is that? 12? Good job. This is a Shimano Sedona 3000 reel with blackout rod. This is donated by Bob's Lawn Care. And this goes to number 65, Eric Goff. Eric Goff. Is Eric Goff in the building? Got to be present to win. Eric Goff. And all of God's men said he's not here, amen. And... Uh, all right. Hey, those of you who are friends of Brother Goff, remind him what he lost, okay? All right. Again, we'll draw another number, and the number is 73. That goes with Gene Horton. Gene Horton. Gene, Horton. Gene Horton's here. There's your new fish and rod and reel. And uh, so good job on that. Item 13, TK Electric hat and Rough Rider pocket knife from TK Electric. Terry Darnell. Terry Darnell. Is Terry Darnell in here? Right up there, second row. Good. And then the uh, Camo Calfskin Bible, uh, donated by Gullion's Christian Bookstore, a Camo Calfskin Bible. Um, item 14 goes to? Greg Pardue. Greg Pardue. All right, look at that. Good job, Brother Greg. And from JVB Automotive, we have one more case knife. And uh, this case knife is item 15. It goes to? Avery Horton. Avery Horton, right here in the fifth row. And Zany Flavors, the Spicy Meat Glazes, item 16. Todd Knight. Todd Knight. Over there on the left. Thank you, Todd. And from TK's Electric, it is a t-shirt and a copper stone knife. Copper stone knife and a TK Electric t-shirt. Item 17 goes to? Bradley Goff. Brandon Goff. Oh, Bradley Goff. Bradley, you're not here? All right. We'll do another name. Do another name for item 17. Jonathan Barker. Jonathan Barker. All right. Here's your love offering and a uh, copper stone knife and a t-shirt. Amen. And uh, so thank you so much, Brother Barker. Item 18, a $25 gift card to Lowe's Hardwares given by Stewart's Grading. Jim Wilson. Jim Wilson. All right. There he goes. And uh, you can go shopping there. 90-day uh, devotional in the life of Christ by Gullion's Christian Bookstore. Item 19. David Weiss in the house. David Weiss over here to my right. Good job. And uh, this is for kids of all ages called the Ball Blaster, kind of like a Nerf gun thing, and uh, shoot them up. So Venable Brothers, I don't think you need a permit to shoot this thing, so you should be able to just have fun at it, guys. All right, donated by Venable Brothers, item number 20, and it goes to? Randy Nelson. Randy Nelson. And uh, there you go. He's got a gift for the grandkids there, right? Okay, we'll do one more, and then we're going to do one of the drawings. We mentioned that before, so uh, let's give this one out. This last thing is item 21. It's a case knife donated by TK's Electric, and this case knife goes to? Grayson Davis. 
Grayson Davis. Where's Grayson at? Grayson, right there on the right. There you are, Grayson. Thank you. So uh, you, we'll deliver that to you. Then we have two big ticket items. These go to those of you who brought visitors. And uh, the first item of the two we're going to give away, the first one is this 28-inch burner. It's a two-burner Blackstone griddle. And uh, the Freedom Baptist Church got that. So this, uh, this goes to the name that we draw out from here. So David's going to find someone to draw something out of here. Who's going to come to it? One of you boys come up here. It keeps us out of liability, all right? And uh, so you just g give a good rummage, man. Don't look in there. Don't look for your dad's name or anything. Uh, just rumble through there and pull one card out. And uh, let's see here. This grill will go to Dylan Tuttle. Yeah, I hear it, Dylan. All right. So, Jay, uh, Dylan, this will be yours. Uh, if we'll just leave it there for now. And uh, if you want to Indian leg wrestle anybody for it afterwards and see if you want to do that, that'd be great. So we do have one other big ticket item and about 20 more gifts we'll give away at the conclusion. I want to say again, on behalf of Freedom Baptist Church, thank you so much for coming tonight and being a part of this. And uh, though we do look forward to that, I'm going to turn it over to our preacher now and he'll introduce a few folks and we'll enjoy some singing and then the preaching as well. And again, once again, thank you so much for being with us tonight. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you to those who donated <clears throat> the items. Those are wonderful. I tell you, we had a good time gathering those. And uh, most of the time you go, you go to things like this. And I mean, you talk about there's at least 10 or 12 good. You know what I mean when I say good case knives. I mean, they some ain't so good, but there was some good ones over there. And, and that fishing rod combination, that, they, that was good. And, and the black stones, these are good good things. Thank you so much for being here. That's all, and uh, you know, nice, that's not the main reason we're here. We're here to worship the Lord Jesus Christ as men uh, who love the Lord. And uh, certainly if you, if you don't have a relationship with him, we, it's our prayer that you do before you leave, amen? But thank you so much for being here. And if you invited somebody, thank you for doing that. And we're going to have the fellas come up and sing. Y'all come ahead and sing and get ready for us. And um, I'll introduce Brother Barker. Um, I appreciate uh, Brother Jonathan Barker. And the fellas are going to sing three. And then Brother Barker, you come on up when they get done. And uh, God is really, um, you know, in the ministry, out of the ministry, you need, uh, you need godly influences in your life. No matter what you do, no matter what the label is of what you do, work, you need godly influences in your life. I don't know how many times I've seen people shipwrecked because they, they didn't have it. They had the wrong influences in their life. And I'll tell you, God has knit our hearts together, Brother Barker and mine. And, uh, you know, when I leave and we don't get together much, he lives too far away. He lives in the middle of nowhere. I mean, where's he at? I don't see him. I hope he's here. If I tell you, you live in the country, everybody thought gospel like Walker Town was in the country. You know, people from out of state, they'll say, oh, he's in the woods. He's on the backside of 350,000 people. Amen. Jonathan Barker, he's in the middle of nowhere. He's a bison farm across the road from his church. I'm telling you, this guy's in... But so God has knit our hearts together and uh, every time I hear him, I get help from the Lord and I appreciate his friendship and uh, appreciate him being here tonight on this Saturday night. And I want you to hear him gladly. So as soon as they get done uh, singing, uh, you hear uh, Brother Jonathan Barker, pastor of Amazing Grace Baptist Church and uh, better known Low Gap, I guess. I don't know if that's your address, but that's where you're at. I don't even know if that's where you're at, Brother Barker, um, but I appreciate him. Appreciate his church, and they're under a built in a building program, so he's still got most of his hair, I believe, and it hadn't turned gray yet. And uh, they're doing a great job, great work up there, uh, great work, and I appreciate him being with us tonight. You enjoy the singing, Brother Barker. You come preach to us.
someday when life is over and I've said my last goodbyes, I'm going to see my Savior standing at the door. And then I'll hear him say, you're welcome. All your cares are left behind. And you won't have to worry anymore. No, I won't have to worry when I reach the other shore. All my troubles will be over and I'll rest forever. Somebody up here and play a little man on with us. <laughs> Get the banjo. Somebody was asking for a banjo. Hopefully, you won't regret it here in a minute. This is one everybody knows. If you want to sing along with us on this, then that'd be good. <laughs>
you come on. You come on, preach to us. I don't know what instruments are going to be in heaven, I, and it ain't going to matter because Jesus is there. But I'd sure like to hear that banjo. <laughs> if I had to pick, I know there's something better than that in heaven. I, I know all that, but it sounded pretty good, didn't it? That was great, fellas. Thank you all. I appreciate that. Leave it on to the Lord. And you have your Bibles ready. And Brother Barker, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for being with us tonight. You preach to us. There we go. All right. Is it all right if I move these papers? I'll be preaching $25 gift cards if I don't. I don't know if anybody else is like that or not, but uh, I definitely will be saying something else. And um, I'll just start out like this. I hate Steve, uh, uh, Jake Kite. Man, anybody can just pick up anything and play it like that. It just, y'all say that's a strong word. Well, you use it too. And uh, kids don't use that word. You adults know what I'm saying, though. Know. And man, he can just play anything. And uh, not just play it, man. He can play the fire out of it. And uh, good to be here tonight. Good to see all of you. And uh, I enjoyed the food. I don't know about y'all, but I enjoyed the food this evening. And I uh, appreciate that. And uh, just good to be in the Lord's house. Say, man, I got to tell you a funny story, though, real quick that just happened. Um, Pastor White said that we're in the middle of a building program. We're building a new sanctuary there at the church. And man, um, it's been going great. And uh, you know what the funny thing about it is? is our electrical uh, contractor is Tim Walker, <laughs> TK's Electric. So I snapped a picture a while ago and sent it to him and said, look what I just won. But anyway, um, I thought it was funny. I got a TK's Electric shirt and he's our contractor on our electricals out of our building. But I appreciate you being here tonight. And I thank the pastor for allowing me to be here. And uh, man, looking at all of these mounts, it's hard not to covet, amen. Um, sitting here, the only thing that bothers me or upset me is there's no turkeys up here. I mean, anybody can pour out a bag of corn uh, and set 200 yards away and shoot a deer. Now, somebody holler amen right there, uh, but you get that turkey in there about 30 or 40 yards from you. It's starting to be my favorite time of the year in about two more months. And uh, man, I love turkey hunting. And um, I guess it's just something about getting that animal to talk back to you. And um, I took my daughter this year, my middle daughter, daughter. She loves to hunt and she went this past year with us for the first time. And uh, I think it was about the maddest that I have ever saw her. We had some birds just hold up about 60 or 70 yards from us in the mountains. And man, she was just mad. She was just plum mad. But anyway, um, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I want you to take your Bibles and go with me to first Kings chapter 17 tonight. And I thought about what do you talk about in a men's meeting? And um, I started to preach on wives be submissive to your husbands because I knew every Everybody would say amen um, if I preached on that tonight, but uh, my mind went back to a thought here. I'll just give you a simple thought here tonight and uh, try not to be long at all tonight, but give you a simple thought here. Many of you, or I don't know about many of you, but I know some of you um, just a few months ago was at the Chosen Banquet with us and uh, good to see Brother Brandon tonight and, and always appreciate him, uh, but was there with us and Brother Jerry brought a, uh, Brother Jared Dixon preached that night and uh, he brought brought a thought out and used a word and I love to do word studies and that word was there. And um, after that message that night, I went home and began studying uh, the word there and started looking through my Bible at the word there. And uh, the Lord actually ended up letting me preach a series of five different messages at our church on the word there. And I want to look at one of those tonight um, with the help of the Lord. Good to have uh, evangelist David Williams with me tonight somewhere. There he is. I thought we was closer to the front, man. We're backslid. But anyway, um, he's out of Asheville. He's kicking our revival off tomorrow at our church and um, I appreciate him being with me tonight. If you found your place, 1 Kings 17, let's stand in honor and reverence to the reading of God's word. I'm going to read two verses to you and then I'm going to take a minute and bring us up to date with where we're at. The Bible said to us in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse number four, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and I have commanded the ravens 
to feed thee there. Now go with me to verse number nine. The Bible said, Arise, go thee to Zarephath, uh, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there uh, to sustain thee. And here's what I want to talk to you about for just a few minutes tonight. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? I know many of us has went on trips with our families. And if you've got kids like I do, usually within the first 10 minutes of leaving the house, we hear that phrase, are we there yet, dad? And I want to talk to you about that thought tonight. Are we there yet? Father, I love you tonight. I thank you for being good to us. And Father, you know the need of this service here tonight. God, you know who's here saved. You know who's here lost, Father. You know who's here in a backslidden state. God, Father, and if the truth was to be known, each and every one of us sitting here tonight could be a little bit closer to you. So God, I pray, Lord, that you'd help us tonight meet the needs of the service. Bless freedom, God. Bless Pastor White and all of their efforts, Father, that went into this meeting. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can be seated tonight. I'll use um, a little of the same illustration Brother Jared used that night to bring our mind into this. Uh, um, you know, a lot of times we uh, I love to hunt. I love to fish. Probably my favorite, if I could pick one of the two, um, would be bass fishing. I love the largemouth fish. And um, I sold my bass boat a couple years ago. And uh, But probably that's my favorite. And you know, if you're going to um, win that tournament that you enter, if you're going to um, get that limit of fish, there's something for certain. You've got to be there uh, to make it happen. I know many of you, we just come out of deer season. And um, if you're like me, you still got a game camera up. You're wanting to see what made it through the year. If it's going to make it again the next year, you're hoping for that. And probably over the next month or two, you'll start um, walking through the mountain. I hunt in the mountains. Uh, you'll start walking through the mountains and looking for sheds to see, you know, what all made it. But if we're going to kill that buck that we had on camera, um, we had to be there for that to happen. And I want to talk to you about that there for just a little while. When we come into 1 Kings 17, it's a very interesting chapter in the life of Elijah. And man, I love studying the life of Elijah. Matter of fact, when you begin looking at it, it's by the brook and um, here in the beginning by the brook and there's a place of training for Elijah there at the brook. He learned about patience in verse number three, but he learned about provisions in verse number four. Then he leaves the brook and he goes down to the widow's house and there was a place of testing. Uh, he learned to be bold in verse number 13, but he, I mean, he learned to be bold in verse 13, but in verse 20, he learned uh, to be broken also. And can I say something to us as men tonight? We can be bold and be broken at the same time. I'm all for a man being bold. We've got enough sissies uh, in our society today. I'm all for a man being bold. Now, don't, don't fall out with me right now. Okay, I'm just going to say it joking a little bit, but uh, I, I've got three daughters. I've got a 19 year old, I've got a 16 year old, and I've got a 10 year old, and she rules the roost. But anyway, uh, uh, I've told boys before and preaching before, I said, Look, if you want to talk to my daughter, there's a few things that has to be in place. Number one, you can't be a sissy. Somebody say amen right there. Number two, you got to be saved. Somebody say amen right there. You got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, we've got those three things out of the way. You got to be able to back a trailer. You got to be able to drive a straight drive. You got to know how to work cattle and you got to be able to put a dip of Copenhagen straight fine cut in and not throw up in 15 minutes. All right. If you can do all of those things, uh, you can date or talk. <laughs> we'll put it that way. You might can text my daughter. Okay. But look at this. We can be bold, uh, but we can be broken at the same time. And we see that in the life of Elijah. And then he leaves and goes on to Mount Carmel. He's at a place of training, a place of testing. And he finds himself at a place of triumph at Mount Carmel. Man, did God not show off in a big way there at Mount Carmel. But in order for Elijah to see any of these things transpire in his life, and any of these things happen in his life, I'm not going to lie, that bear kindly startled me for just a second when I caught it. It's not every day you're preaching and a bear is right there. Anyway, um, in, in order for Elijah 
to see any of these things transpire in his life, Elijah had to be there for that to happen. Are we there yet? You see, when we get there, uh, there's some things that'll happen there that won't happen anywhere else. You know what? I, I thought about this. I, I was driving over today and uh, Brother Nathan teaches my middle daughter guitar. And I remember right after she started taking from him a few years ago, um, uh, Olivia had got in this kick just out of the middle of nowhere. We was riding back down the parkway. I hunt up around Saddle Mountain and we was riding back down the parkway just out of the nowhere. She said, you know what, dad? And I said, what baby? She said, I'm going to kill a deer this year. And I said, you are? She never shot. She never showed any interest in it. And she said, yeah. She said, I'm going to kill a deer this year. And I said, okay. So we went to work, man, and got her shooting and got her tuned in and um, got her a rifle set up, a, a nice Remington rifle with a, a 308 with a nice Zeiss scope on it and got her set up ready to go. And we started watching the game camera and we got one of those cell cameras and um, we started watching it. And on a Sunday morning, early on a Sunday morning, um, there was this nice 11 pointer showed up on camera and I showed it to her and she said, dad, we should be there. I said, no, it's Sunday morning. We should be at church. Somebody give me an amen right there. So we started watching it in Sunday afternoon uh, between 430 and 445. Guess what? He showed back up. Well, Monday came around and Monday at that time was guitar lessons. Uh, and I told her, I said, we got to make a choice today. And I said, you can make the choice. We can go hunting this evening or we can go to guitar. And she said, well, dad, you've always told me that we need to stay the course. And if we're committed to something, we need to be committed to it. And I said, yeah. And he might be up there on the mountain this evening. So we might ought to be committed to that. And she done the adult thing and we went to guitar. I'll never forget, man, we were sitting at Brother Nathan's house and um, I, I, my, my phone went off and I looked down in between 4.30 and 4.45. Guess what? He came through again and I was like, Olivia, you know, you want to play the guitar? We could have been there and killed that deer. So Tuesday afternoon, we knew we couldn't go. And guess what happened? Between 4.30 and 4.45, he came through. So I told her on Wednesday morning, I said, look, here's what we'll do. We normally don't hunt Wednesday evening, but even if you shoot it this evening, we'll still have time to get back. I can preach. We can go to church. Then we'll go back up there and get it. And I said, if he stays his course, uh, we'll have him out and on the truck and back to the shop, skinning him uh, um, back at the house before it ever even gets dark. She said, it sounds like a great idea. So we loaded up, got our backpacks ready, went in, opened the door got inside the deer stand, closed the door back, turned the heater on, got our chocolate muffins out. Somebody say, man, and our Mountain Dew out. And we was roughing it on the side of Saddle Mountain. Guess what happened at 437? Here he come. I seen him coming through the woods. I said, get your gun. She got her gun. She laid it up. She was 14 then. She laid it up on the shooting rail. He stepped out. Boom. She pulled the trigger, shot him, killed him. Before it got dark, we was back at the shop cleaning that deer. But you know the only way that that happened? We had to be there. We had to be there. There's some things in your life, men, that God wants to do, but you got to be there for God to do them. Are we there yet? You see, when we get there, there's three or four things I'll show you real quickly tonight. When we get there, there is a place of submission. There is a place of submission. Know what the Bible said in verse number five. The Bible said this in verse number five. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith. You see, he had to be there and there was a place of submission. Note again in verse number 10. The Bible said this, and we know the brook dries up. Now he's fixing to leave. And the Bible said this, so he arose and went to Zarephath. One thing that we must learn in our life is the word submission. And here's what it means. It's the act of yielding to a power or an authority. You know, a lot of us, we're men tonight and we're the head of our house and we wear the pants in our house and we run, we're the ruler of the roost at our house because our wife lets us be. And we're the ruler of the roost of our house. And, and a lot of times we have a problem with this word submission. 
But the truth of the matter of this, it's not that we're the head of our house. There's somebody else that should be the head of our house and that's Christ tonight. And if we're going to get there, this place, and I'm headed somewhere, stay with me. We're going to have to learn submission. You see, there is a place of submission. God said to Elijah, I want you to do this. And you know what God done or what Elijah done? He done exactly what God told him to do. You know, sometimes God tells us to do things that don't really make sense. I got like two amens right there, but it's the truth tonight. We really don't understand. I remember 16 years ago, whenever I left from where I was at and, and full-time on staff from a church that I was assistant pastor in and went in the middle of nowhere at a bison farm, but that's the truth, there is a bison farm across the road from our church, in the middle of nowhere and 21 people voted me in as the pastor of Amazing Grace Baptist Church. Now, I'll never forget, man, part of them ended up leaving, you know, that's, you're having a good day when you got 21 and part of them leaves. But anyway, in, in order for me to be where I'm at today in the ministry and God doing what he's doing in our lives today at Amazing Grace, 16 years ago, I had to be there. And there is a place of submission. We submit ourselves to God. If you're here lost tonight, you'll never get where God wants you to be until you find the place of submission and you submit yourself to Christ. There was a place of submission. Number two, follow me. There was a place of supply or a place of sustaining. Note again what your Bible said in verse number six. The Bible said this, and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening and he drank of the brook. Now jump down to verse 16. Know what the Bible said in verse 16. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. You know what I found out here? I found out that even by the brook or at the widow's house, God supplied or sustained Elijah in everything that he needed. Now, I don't know about you. I, I, I love to camp. I, it don't bother me to pack back in the mountains and, and, and to stay three or four days. I love to camp like that. Uh, and a lot of people, when you say you love to camp, they've got a 48 foot fifth wheel and, and, and everything. Everything. Now I'm talking about man camping. Somebody give me an amen right there. Put on a backpack and go where there's no phone service. Thank God for areas that still like that. And set up camp and camp a few days and fly fish for native trout. I love it, man. But I'm not interested in sitting by a brook and a crow bringing me something to eat. Are you with me? But that's what happens right here. That's what happens. You see, sometimes God in our submission to him will put us places that we don't understand. But hear me and hear me well. Every need that I've ever had in my life, if I was where God wanted me to be at, God sustained and supplied and met every need that I ever had. I, I, I was talking yesterday. I, 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 I guess I'm supposed to be speaking more than preaching, aren't I? But I, I was talking yesterday to uh, Brother Mark Gentry, a man in our church that's become one of my right-hand men in this building program. And 16 years ago, when I took Amazing Grace Baptist Church, I took it on $500 a month. That's what I went there on. They said, we can give you $500 a month. I said, before, matter of fact, I'd already told them I would take the church before they even told me that because it's not about the money. If you go just for the money, you're not going to last long. It's about a call God puts inside your heart and being there. And I'll never forget, man, I went there on $500 a month 16 years ago. And uh, you know what? Looking back over 16 years, you know what I can say? There's never been a time that I went to the cabinet that there wasn't beans in the cabinet. There's never been a time that I opened a tater box that there wasn't taters in the tater box. You let me tell you the reason why? Because when we get there, when we get in that place that God wants us to be at, I promise you there will be a place that God sustains you and supplies every one of your needs. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Number one, there is a place of 
there is a place of submission. There is a place, number two, of supply or sustaining. But can I say this, number three tonight, there sometimes proves to be a place of suspense. A place of suspense. You say, well, preacher, what do you mean by that? Well, here's what the word suspense means. It means a, a state of uncertainty. You say, well, Jonathan, you just said that God had met every one of your needs. He has. Amen. He has. He's always been there. Tell me a time he's not been faithful. You'll not find one. Somebody holler amen. He always has, but there has been some times that I wondered what he was doing. There has been. Know with me your Bible again. Verse number seven. Remember, he's over there by the brook. He's eating. God's meeting all of his needs. I mean, he, he's away from everybody. He's taking it easy. And, and, and God's meeting all of his needs. And all of a sudden, watch verse number seven. And it came to pass after a while, the brook dried up. I don't know about you, but that's a bad day if you're out in the middle of nowhere and the brook dries up. I mean, there's his water. You can do without food longer than you can do without uh, water. I mean, you can do without food easier than you can without water. You got to stay hydrated. What happens? The brook dries up. Well, God moves him. So maybe in the backside of his mind, he said, well, everything's going to be all right now. But watch this. Verse number 17. It came to pass, now he's at the widow's house. And again, I, I'm, I'm jumping through this and I hope that I don't lose you in this, but you that knows the story of chapter 17 understands this. He's at the widow's house now. God's supplying everything, meeting their needs in verse 17. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house fell sick and his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. Now, back where I'm from, when you ain't got no breath in you, you're dead. Are you with me? You're dead. What happens to this boy? He dies. Here's Elijah. Now the brook's dried up, but now the boy's dead. Now, God, you led me here. God, you brought me to this place. God, I was submissive to you. I left the brook. I came here. God, I've done what you told me to do. And now the brook is dry. Now the boy's dead. What in the world? There will be some times in our life, men, when we can't figure it out. I don't know about anybody else here. I, I'm, I'm a pretty good guesser. But we're fixers tonight. I don't know if any of your wives ever come in and, and she begins to talk. I, I know your wives come in and begin to talk. <laughs> but as she begins to talk, it's, well, you know what? This and 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 this. And, this. and while she's this and this and this, and you're processing it all in your mind how to fix it. And by the time she gets done, you got it all fixed. Now, are we on live feed tonight? <laughs> Mine came in, I'll just say it, bless God. Mine came in like that last night. And Brother John, you know what? By the end of her this, and I had it all fixed. And I told her how it could all be fixed. And you know what she said? She said this. Sometimes I just want you to listen and say everything's going to be all right. Y'all bunch of henpecked sissies. They want none of y'all. Say amen now because you know your wife might be watching. <laughs> it's a truth. Come on now. Because that's what we do. That's what we do as men. We fix things, but there every once in a while, we're going to find ourselves in some areas in our life where we don't know what to do. And we're going to be sitting there going, God, I'm going to church. I'm living for you. I'm doing what you've called me to do or what you've placed for me to do. Why is it like this? There is a place of suspense sometimes. We just don't understand. We just don't understand. 
why it has to be the way it is. There was a place of suspense, but watch this. I'm moving quickly. I'm watching the time. There was also the place of supplication. Note, Elijah's been submissive. God's been supplying his needs. God's moved him and he's wondering now, man, the brook's dried up. The boy's dead. I'm still in the center of God's will, I believe. What am I to do now? Look what the Bible said in verse number 20. And he cried unto the Lord and said, Oh Lord, my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? And he stretched himself over the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, Oh Lord, my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come in, uh, come into him again. You know what he done? He got to a place where he, look, watch this. I don't think he's getting bitter. I, maybe he don't understand it all. And hear me and hear me well. We cannot understand everything and not be bitter at God. Amen. There's nothing wrong with saying, God, I don't understand this. Can you help me with this and not be bitter at him and saying that? Jesus even said, why hast thou forsaken me? There's nothing wrong with a conversation with God as long as we're not bitter at God. And here Elijah is, man, he's obeying God. He's doing what God says. He's there where God wants him at. And everything begins to go south. And you know what Elijah does? Elijah don't pick up the phone and call 37 preachers and say how about helping me pray right now Elijah don't post on Facebook I'm having the worst day of my life somebody pray for me no that's not what Elijah does you know what Elijah does Elijah goes to the person that's always been there for him the one that sustained him the one that supplied everything even though he may be in suspense you know what he does he says God I need you it's a place of supplication you know what we're missing in our men today? We're missing men that knows how to pray. We're missing men that the old timers would say it this way, that will grab a hold of the horns of the altar and pray through. They'll not get up until they hear from God. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Uh, I, there was a, a preacher out of our church and um, his name's Josh Jenkins and um, AKA Mater is what we all call him. I mean, you know, you pastor in the country, one of your preacher boys is named Mater. But anyway, Mater was doing exactly what God had for his life. Man, God was prospering him. He was pastoring the church. God was blessing him. And I'll never forget on an October afternoon, he called me and he said, Preacher, I need you to come to the house. And, and Leslie and I drove up to Sparta where he was pastoring at. And we walked in and sat down with him and Miss Bridget, his wife at the time. And to make a long story short, they ended up telling us that Miss Bridget had been diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease or ALS. And it was sporadic, it was not hereditary, and they give her three to five years to live. Um, she didn't make it the full five years, just a couple years in. Miss Bridget went home to be with the Lord, left Brother Josh and two little boys behind. And uh, I'll never forget one day, Josh called me and he said, hey man, he said, can we go down to the rock at the river? And I said, yeah. I said, man, you let me know when you want to go. He said, well, I'll be up there in just a minute if there's any way you can meet me now. And I said, yeah. I said, come to the house, we'll walk down there. And off behind our church, you walk off down this steep embankment and when you get to the bottom, the Fisher River runs right there. There's a big rock that leans out over that and right after Josh got right with God and started coming to the church, uh, me and him would walk down there before daylight on Sunday mornings. This was back when, when, when there was hardly anybody at our church and we would lay on that rock as the sun came up on early Sunday mornings and we would pray and beg God to bless our church and to do things in our church and I prayed and even asked God God to call brother Josh to preach down there and God done that and I'll never forget that afternoon we got there and we walked off that rock it was just me and him down there like we had many times before and he looked at me and he said preacher I just don't understand why things are the way they are and we're right here like this and I said son I don't understand it either but I do know one thing there's been many a times before that we've laid down across this rock right here and we began to make our petitions known to God and there's never been a time that 
but God did meet with us right here. And you know what we did for a while down there around that rock? We just began to supplicate with God and pour our heart out to God. You see, there is a place of supplication. Are we there yet? I'll show you this lastly and I'm done. Look what happens, verse number 22 and 23. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the soul of the child came unto him again and he revived. And goes on to the latter portion of verse 23 and says, see the son liveth, thy son liveth. You see there, when you get there, it's also a place of supernatural occurrences. Elijah would have never seen this boy brought back from the dead if he hadn't have been there. If he hadn't have been there. Are you hearing it? If he had not had been there, he'd have never saw it happen. You know, we're interested in supernatural occurrences. I, I don't know about you, but I am. I'm interested in seeing God move in a big way. I, I, I thank God for meetings of days gone by. Man, I, I love them. I love to read about them. Uh, matter of fact, we put a book together a few years ago about the Foothills Revival of 2016 that we had and, and um, over 200 was saved in that five-week span and what God done in that meeting, man, it, it was a supernatural occurrence. And I love to get that book back out and, and read through that and, 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 and man, the testimonies that's in it and what God done. I'm sure some of y'all may have even come to some of those services and what God done through that. Man, I love, to, I love it. But hear me tonight. If we're ever going to see it again, we're going to have to be there. We're going to be there. We're gonna have to get to this place. Are we there yet? Are we there? Are we at that place where we are completely submitted to God? Where we say, God, it's not my will. I, I preached this past Sunday morning, and, and I told you I love to study words, but I preached this past Sunday morning on the word nevertheless. He said, if it be thy will to let this cup pass from me, then that's great, but nevertheless, not my will, thine be done. Submission. It's what it is. A nevertheless life is a life of submission. Are we there yet? Are we submitting ourselves to God? When we submit ourselves to God, we'll see the supply and the sustaining of God. Yes, there'll be times of suspense, but there'll also be times of supplication. And that will bring some supernatural occurrences in our life. I thought about this. I was there when all three of my daughters got saved. Matter of fact, in that meeting in 2016, God allowed us to, uh, uh, we was not interested in being in the tent ministry, but we outgrew the church that that meeting started in. God allowed us to be able to buy a tent that would seat about 1,500 people. And underneath that old gospel tent is where I, not in 2016, but throughout the next several years, I saw all three of my kids get saved. I'm glad I was there. when That, that was a supernatural occurrence, by the way, when they got saved. I was there for it. Are we there yet, men? Are we there? That's all I wanted to leave you with tonight. Are we there yet? Because when we get there, there's a place where a lot of things can happen at. We want to be here and we want to be over yonder when God wants us to be there. Elijah saw some things, but he had to be there. You know what, in the morning, in the morning, God will do some things at the church. Are you going to be there? Tomorrow night, I, we still have church on Sunday night where I pastor at. And tomorrow night, God will do some things. And Are you going to be there? Matter of fact, uh, a week ago this past Wednesday night, we went in and we do Awanas on Wednesday night. So our kids was out at Awanas and um, uh, we went in and um, we opened up with a song. We, we go through our prayer list on Wednesday night and take prayer requests through our congregation. And then we come around the altar, all of us that wants to, and have a season of prayer. And then we go back and, and I usually we're going through some different Bible studies on Wednesday nights. And a week ago this past Wednesday night, I opened my Bible and I got ready to preach. And I said, hey, does anybody have a testimony tonight? And, and testimonies ain't my big toe hurt. Somebody say amen right there. It's magnifying the name of Christ. 
One of them spoke up and said, yeah, I just want to brag on them for a minute. I just want to thank God for being good to me. I just want to thank God I'm not going to hell. I just want to thank God for his blessings on my life. I said, well, praise God. And I said, now the Bible says, and somebody else said, wait a minute. And somebody else said, wait a minute. And you know what? I never even got to that verse. And the redeemed of the Lord just went to saying so. And you know what? I got the experience because I was there. Because I was there. Are we there yet? Father, I love you tonight. And I thank you, Lord, for this time that you've allowed us to meet together. Father, thank you for Pastor White, the people here at Freedom. God, thank you for their hospitality. God, I thank you, Lord, for each and every man and boy that's sitting here tonight. And I pray, God, that you would work in their lives. Father, I pray that if there's any here lost, God, that you'd save them tonight. I pray, God, that if there's any here out of your will, God, that you'd bring them back close to you. God, I thought about this while I was preaching, God, in that area of submission. God, there may be some man here tonight that you've been dealing in his heart about preaching, God. And I pray, God, that he would find himself in a place of submission tonight. God, just help us to get there in what you have for our life. In Jesus' name. Amen, Pastor. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Gentlemen, I want to ask you a question. If you're here tonight, you say, Pastor, and nobody's looking, nobody's going to call your name out. Pastor, I'll be honest. I'm not sure if I died tonight, I'd go to heaven. I'm not sure about it. And I want you to pray for me. Is there anybody that well, our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed? Nobody's looking, nobody's talking. You'd say, Pastor, pray for me. I'm concerned enough to say, pray for me. Would you just slip your hand up and I'll pray for you. I'm not going to call your name out. But I'm going to come get you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. I see your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Several hands went up. Anybody else? Pastor, that's me. I'm, I'll be honest. I'm not sure. Pray for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see your hand. Five or six hands went up. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Here's what I want you to do. In just a moment, the men are going to sing. We're going to stand. They're going to sing. If you want to take care of that tonight, and listen, we're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised tomorrow. You know, I you said, preacher, I didn't know we was going to have all this. But I'll be honest, we that we're we're a Baptist church, and not just because we're a Baptist church, we love you. We're concerned about where you're going to spend eternity. If we wouldn't, we wouldn't have these meetings. But we are concerned. So just a moment, we're going to stand. And when they sing, I want you to come. We'll have men with their Bibles ready to show you how to be saved. Next question I want to ask you. Say, Pastor, I know I'm saved. There's some things in my life that I need to give to God. I'm not submitted in some areas of my life. I know there's some areas in my life that are not going the way God wants them to go. Like I'm not doing what God wants me to do. And I want you to pray for me. Would you lift your hand? I'm saved. There's some areas of my life. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, let's get that taken care of tonight. And there may be somebody here that says, Pastor, I'm saved. And I feel like God may be calling me the ministry. I want you to come tonight when we stand. And get that thing nailed down. Let's all stand together. The men are going to sing. Hey, if you raised your hand that you're not sure you're safe, won't you come? I There'll be men meet you here. Fellas, could I have some of our men broken. come and pray? Just at least some of our Make men come it pray. Over if you said, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm safe. Just come on down. We got men with Bibles. They'll show you how to be safe. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Gentlemen, don't wait. Don't wait. I can't take. A soul that's sin sick and wash it white as snow. Let God do something in your heart. Would you come? Come on, don't wait.
We're going to sing another verse after this one. You come on. Come on. Come on. Somebody will come with you. Somebody will meet you down here. Some call him Savior, the Redeemer of man. I call him Jesus, for he's my dearest friend. And if Let the Lord help you. If you're here tonight, you raised your hand. And you say, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm saved. I want to tell you, there's several things you've got to know. Number one, God loves you. Want anybody in this world, God loves you. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Number two, you got to realize everybody's a sinner. The Bible says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all missed the mark, gentlemen. All of us have missed the mark. You say, there's nobody good enough to get to heaven on their own. Nobody. We're not going to get to heaven and find a big old grand scale in heaven. We're going to outweigh our good works. We're going to outweigh our bad works. That wouldn't happen, but it's not even possible. We're not saved by our good deeds. All men are sinners. And number three, you got to realize sin must be paid for. Sin's got to be paid for. The Bible says for the wages of sin is death. And that's talking about the second death over there in Revelation in hell. The wages of sin is death. There's a second part of that verse. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So number one, God loves everybody. Number two, all men are sinners. Number three, sin's got to be paid for. And number four, the good news is Jesus paid for your sin. Romans 5, 8, but God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for you. He died for you. He saw you in your sin and he died for you yet. And number five, I believe you got to call on the name of the Lord to be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So tonight, you realize God loves you. You realize you're a sinner. You realize sin must be paid for. And you understand that Jesus paid for you. He took your place. He had no sins of his own, only those of what we've committed, not his. And he took your sin, he took my sin. And on that cross, and I got to go to the, where Golgotha is in the garden tomb. And I got to see that place of the skull. And I got to see underneath Caiaphas's palace where they dropped him down probably. And he was in that dungeon there at Caiaphas's house. That dark place. As I stand there in that dark cave, being dropped down, you look up, it, it's scary you looking up. The thing about everything he went through, he went through it for you and me. And with heads bowed and eyes closed, you said, Pastor, you raised your hand early. You said, I'm not sure I'm saved. I realize I'm a sinner. I realize sin has a payment, a penalty. I realize Jesus paid my sin debt. And I realize I need to pray and ask the Lord to save me. I want to ask you to do something tonight. I'm not trying to make anything easy or hard on you because I, I believe that somebody needs to get saved and I don't want you to leave without getting saved. If you're here tonight, you raise your hand. Pastor, I'm not sure that I'm saved. I want you to bow your head right now. Everybody bow their head and close their eyes. And I want you to pray. It's not my praying that saves you. It's not the prayer that saves you. It's the condition and position of your heart. And in your heart, you say, Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Dear Jesus, I know sin has a penalty. 
And Lord, I believe you died for me. And right now, I ask you to forgive me of my sin. And by faith, I receive you as my personal Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Nobody looking. Heads bowed and eyes closed. If you say, Pastor, I right now ask the Lord Jesus to save me. I want to lift my hand and testify that I did that. Would you, would you raise your hand? Nobody's looking. Nobody's looking at me. Pastor, I, raised, I, I just prayed and asked the Lord to save me. And I want you to, I want, I, want to wreck, I want you to pray for me. Would you lift your hand, Pastor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. We want to help you. We want to help you. Anybody else? We want to help you. Those that raise your hand and say you got saved. I want you to know we want to help you. Please see one of us after service and we want to give you some things that will help you. The greatest, greatest day in my life is May the 4th, 1986. When I bowed my head as a 14-year-old young man and asked the Lord Jesus to save me. I've never been sorry. I've never, there's a lot of things I've regretted in my life. But that's not one of them. Thank the Lord for the day he saved me. Father, we thank you for this night. Lord, thank you for what you've done here tonight. Thank you for the message. And God, I pray that you'll help us as we go from this place. Lord, I pray for those that raised their hand to be saved. So they trusted you as their Savior. Lord, I pray you'll help them to grow in you. I pray for the ones that didn't get saved. Lord, I pray they would be before it's too late. And Father, we'll thank you and we'll praise you in Jesus' name.